Hey everyone, my name is Pat. I'm from Pat Stares at, as well as the Castle Super Beast podcast. I've been offered a promotional opportunity to tell you guys about a new game called The Chant, which is a recent survival horror release that came out on November 3rd, published by Prime Matter and developed by Brass Token. The Chant is a fairly classic style survival horror experience that honestly reminds me a lot of some of the uh, earlier or middle Silent Hill games, as well as some of the rarer, more independent horror games of the PS2 and Wii era, particularly something like genuinely Escape from Bug Island, at least in terms of its structure. The long and short of it is that the main character, Jess, seems to be haunted by some kind of personal tragedy in her past and decides to take up an offer from her friend Kim in order to attend a spiritual retreat. The primary issue with this is that it is a deserted island run by what is absolutely, clearly, obviously a fucking cult. It's a cult. L look at these people. It's a cult. Welcome. I understand it took some convincing, but we're so glad you came. Kim is a good friend to you, and that makes you a good friend to us. I'm sure you have many questions, but isn't that how our spiritual journey begins? Regardless, because of her personal trauma and her uh, series of panic attacks about that, as well as some visual hallucinations, she figures, well, I'll give this spirituality thing a try. Pairing into that, is a gameplay system which has a three-pillared approach to your stats. So you're going to have basically your brain or your thoughts, your heart or your body, and your spirituality. And these are going to be gaining experience through both the kinds of ways that you're going to be solving problems and quote-unquote solving enemies, as well as the kinds of dialogue choices that you are going to be dealing with. Uh, if you, uh, you know, use a lot of brain responses, for example, or deal with spiritual threats, uh, that absolutely have to be dealt with with your head, you're going to be dealing a lot of uh, brain XP and that'll allow you to increase a meter that will stop you from getting panic attacks. Killing physical enemies as well as using heart options and dialogue, that kind of thing will be giving you a larger health bar as well as a larger stock of health consumables. So the general structure is a fairly classic survival horror situation uh, it does have the experience twist, uh, and it also has a real focus on building uh, your weapons. So you're going to be dealing with spiritual threats as well as physical threats. And nearly every single enemy in the game will give you a bestiary kind of thing that will allow you to tell you, like, oh, these guys are weak to fire, so you're going to want to build a firebrand. Or these guys are weak to, um, you know, lit sage because they're of a more spiritual nature. And in the time that I was playing, I actually found myself scrounging for resources quite a bit, but also being fairly well rewarded every time I went off the beaten path in order to find those resources. And it was pretty satisfying building up the kind of arsenal per enemy or per encounter. To me, however, the most interesting part of playing through the chant, which I should mention I played for about two, two and a half hours, was definitely the story. It's not the kind of setting or set up that you're usually dealt with. In the game's prologue, it establishes a cult that is trying to contact some kind of extra dimensional being, uh, which obviously fails, and then we skip forward a couple decades to the modern day. What we find in the modern day, however, is a pseudo-spiritual cult that is a lot of good talk, but it seems fairly clear that no one there actually knows what they're doing, and they're just going off of borrowed old notes from the older cult. Uh, one of the more interesting uh, moments in the game is that uh, fairly early on, things go bad, a ritual goes awry, and monsters start to appear. And as you run into the Jesus slash Jared Leto, all wonderful, all knowing leader, the guy doesn't know what's going on. He not only doesn't know what's going on, he doesn't understand why any of it is happening, despite the fact that he is supposed to be the wise one running this whole place. He just seems like kind of a schmuck who's been going off of somebody else's important documents or, or techniques without knowing what the fuck he's doing. Yeah! Get away! 
away from me! Oh, it's you. Don't startle me like that. It's her own fault, okay? She broke the circle. After you drugged us. I didn't drug you. That tea is 100% organic. Everything is going wrong. I don't know what to do. What should I do? Um, as a result of this, this kind of dimensional thing, you're dealing with a variety of enemies that are really very interesting. For one, you're dealing with really just eldritch, extra-dimensional, nonsense uh, plant creatures called the Gloom that are going to be uh, creating panic in your character. They're going to be distorting your view. They're going to be shooting energy at you. And they're just going to be this kind of unknowable, ununderstanding threat that just seems to want... Well, honestly, I'm not quite sure. In addition to them, you've got physical enemies such as uh, old cultists that are, in fact, not metaphysical at all and are just assholes that want to stomp you out for their particular cultist needs. And in the third one, which is by far the in most interesting one, there are, at least from the time that I played, one pursuer-type enemy uh, made entirely out of flies that will be constantly harassing you through at least one section uh, that seems to be tied to Jess's personal trauma, something to do with her sister, something to do with the phobia of flies, uh, of which I did not quite find out the reason, though I bet I could ballpark it from some of the earlier cutscenes. All in all, I enjoyed my time with the chant. I really look forward to playing more of it. While it may not set the world on fire now, I have a strong suspicion that it's going to become a cult classic in the future because of its interesting mix of a weird setting, a weird premise, and some interesting dialogue and crafting elements mixed into a more classic survival horror formula. The chant is on sale right now for about $40 USD or whatever the equivalent exchange would be in your region. It's available on the PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, Xbox Series S, and Microsoft Windows, as well as the Steam Store. What is this place? Kim! Shit, she can't hear me.